Joining me right now is the counsel to the president, Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Good morning, Maria. Your reaction to the Comey uh, interview? Well, let's remind everybody that you're not under oath when you give TV interviews and you're not under oath when you write books. Uh, it was rife with his own opinion, and his opinion was limited to basically three personal engagements, three or four personal engagements with the president of the United States. I wonder why Jim Comey, as the sitting FBI director, did not go to Trump Tower to meet with the president-elect for two whole months after an election, which he admitted he thought would go the other way, and that the women in his, in his house wanted to go the other way. Why wait two months? If you're really worried about counterterrorism and alleged Russian interference, you're, and you don't know the president-elect, get up to Trump Tower like everybody else did and sit down and brief the man sooner. Number two, then you wait an entire year to play Paul Revere. Paul Revere jumped right on his horse. He didn't wait a year. So this man's trying to sell books, not say the country. I thought he struggled to answer basic questions, and Stephanopoulos did a good job pressing him on those matters. I was really struck by Comey's admission that he's a leaker, that he purposely gave information, FBI documents, to his friend, a private citizen, with the intent of leaking it to the New York Times, with the hope of triggering a special counsel. He also admitted that he allowed partisan politics to interfere with his judgment in reopening the Hillary Clinton investigation on October 28th. And ironically, because he thought she'd win, he, he believed all those bogus media polls, that which are national polls, completely irrelevant. We did zero national polls at the winning campaign because all the statewide polls were, were relevant. Uh, one thing I definitely concluded watching Jim Comey is, uh, even though I was trying to grasp his essential relevance last night for an hour, this man swung an election? I don't think so. He's, what he's done is he's drawn the ire of many FBI members, including uh, high-ranking members uh, and DOJ members, right, left, and center. They're really upset that somebody, particularly in the midst of an active investigation by Mr. Mueller, would, ins would once again put the spotlight on himself. Yeah. Well, there are two congressional investigations underway right, right now as well, uh, with the Judiciary Committee and the House Oversight Committee investigating the FBI's handling of the election and the handling of the Hillary Clinton email scandal, as well as uh, a Trump investigation as well. And Maria, so, to your point, they yeah. can't get the memos. What? Those investigators have been looking for the Comey memos. He likes to share them with the press. He likes to be mm. all furtive about them in these, in these interviews, if not in the book. But those investigators in the House who, inve who represent all of us in Congress, they have the right to get those memos, and they ought to. Well, we're, we're also going to hear more about Jim Comey when we get more of the investor, uh, it, when we get the Inspector General report. So we had an That's explosive right. report out Friday night from the Department of Justice Inspector General examining former FBI Director, uh, the Deputy Director, Andrew McCabe, and his role in the Clinton email investigation. The report detailing a phone call that McCabe took from a higher up at the Department of Justice, which he said was the most aggressive call he ever received, and That's asked right. that person if they were actually asking him to shut down the Clinton investigation. I spoke with House Judiciary Committee Chairman Bob Goodlatte about that and how far this min misconduct may go yesterday. Here's what he said, Kelly, and listen to this. Got to get your reaction. It may very well go higher up. It may, may even go all the way uh, into the Obama White House. That's why it is so important that uh, the investigation that we launched last fall uh, into how the FBI uh, and the Department of Justice handled uh, the Hillary, email, Hillary Clinton email investigation and uh, the connection between that and how they launched an investigation uh, into the Trump campaign uh, that carried on into 20. 17 when uh, the the, uh, the president actually took office. But, but Kelly, you didn't really have that in the interview last night. I mean, here's right. the situation, right? Right before a major presidential election, you've got the FBI investigating both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, both running for president, and how they handled those investigations is really critical, but Jim Comey doesn't answer for it. He doesn't answer for it, except to curiously say, admit that he thought the election would go the other way. He wanted to insinuate himself into it. And, and then yet, he didn't vote. Stephanopoulos asked him, so you didn't vote? He said, no, 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 I'm in the head of the FBI. I don't want to vote. You know, I have to show that I'm independent. You can't cast a private ballot by the mail or in the ballot box where nobody's looking because you're worried. And yet, you go and you preen in front of the cameras on July 5th, again on July 7th, under oath, two days later, undercutting what he had said two days earlier, really admitting there were 13 devices, not one, that she had, uh, th that Hillary Clinton had all these emails that are gone, which shouldn't have been, et cetera. 
And then, of course, grabbing the spotlight again in October, grabbing the spotlight again in the blue room here, grabbing the spotlight again, being the proximity of power. That is the one consistent thing about Jim Comey is all about Jim Comey. And if you don't believe me, go back and read today, Maria. I want all your viewers to, to know the May 9, 2017 memo from the, the then and current Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein is scathing. He basically says that Comey needs to step aside because he has violated the protocols of the FBI and the DOJ by usurping the power of, the, of that Attorney General Loretta Lynch at the time of breaking every protocol by going out and doing a press avail. He basically says it's textbook example which you're taught not to do. All he had to do was stand up and say we declined to prosecute. Yeah. But he had to do this whole flurry and make himself relevant and look like, uh, look like the big guy on the block uh, because he thought Hillary would win. But again, even with the dossier, to go to Trump Tower on January 6th and do a hang back after everybody else is out of the room and never once reveal to the president-elect that this dossier is salacious and unverified, still completely uh, not completely verified, and number two, that your political opponents funded it to the tune of millions and millions of dollars. Right. How is that for Mr. Note Taker, Mr. I take contemporaneous notes, I'm going to write... For Mr. Um, fastidious with the details, he sure omitted a whopper to the president-elect who had every right to know, as did the rest of us, that his political opponents paid millions of dollars for that nonsense. Does the president make this worse, though, by engaging in this fight, calling him a slime ball on Twitter, sounding as the worst FBI director in history? Well, he has said many things about Director Comey, though. And, and one thing that he has said that's very relevant is that there were two men in the room at dinner. There were two men in the room in the Oval Office for a limited time on February 14th. And that one is going to go on a fawning book tour publicity stunt, and the other is the President of the United States and is not doing that. So he has a right to speak out and give his recollection of events. But the President did that contemporaneously, Maria. He said in the press conference the very next day when asked, did you ask him to shut down? No. He said, no, I never asked anyone to do that. And that's important here because the president also made contemporary statements, but he's the president. He's a busy guy leading the country. Uh, he's not out there as a disgruntled ex-employee who somehow wanted to clear his conscience after he got fired, mm -hmm. uh, but never raised a white flag. Hey, you don't like being in the Oval Office alone with the attorney general, uh, alone with the president? Go grab the attorney general. Go grab the vice president. Flip yeah. the door, do the door open. Uh, you don't like being at dinner alone with him? Then ask ahead of time, should I bring my wife? Should I bring my deputy, Andrew McCabe? Boy, that would have been funny. Right. Uh, speaking of Andrew McCabe, admitted lie. Now we know he lied four times, three times under oath. So Jim Comey presided over an FBI that had 25,000 rank and file, wonderful men and women who were trying to do their jobs. But boy, the people at the top, where the fix was in against this president, right. which was just what, Page and, 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 Orr and the right. wife and and the he cave. said it was La Cosa Nostra with the president. Look at the yeah. La Cosa Nostra that was going on at the top of the FBI. Now well, you I'm, and I I'm, are I'm Italian, so I'll be offended for us. <laughs> exactly.